How's it going, everybody? So today we are going to be working in SolidWorks. We're going to do procedure number four. And procedure number four is, is pretty unique. It's kind of the first procedure that we're going to do that really starts us into the sketching of your car. All right. So in order to get started into this, we're going to have you guys go to file and open. We're going to have you browse out to your procedure number three. So if you saved it where I asked you to, it's in this PC. It's in the Google Drive file stream and my drive. It's in classroom. You got to find the correct class. And we made a rocket car folder. And in there is procedure number three. So my remote learners, obviously you guys are going to have to have class link open first. Um, you are going to have to have the drive file stream open, et cetera, et cetera. All right. So for procedure number four, as you will see here, um, we can roll this back in time. So procedure number one was our block, which there's the, the first part of the block. There's the chamber on the back. Um, procedure number two, from this point, we went into evaluate in mass properties. We should have the, the correct measurement, whatever your block of wood weighed when we grabbed it from the box or for my distance learners when you emailed me. Um, that's the number you would have in there. Procedure number three, we added the axles. You can see the dimensions on the axles right here then as well. So for procedure number four, what we're going to do is we're going to put a sketch on the side. Now, a couple of ground rules here, first and foremost, and I will put these in the, um, in, in, uh, the Google assignment as well. So in front of this chamber, you're going to have to have any sketch at least 0.375 inches away from this chamber. You're going to have to have your sketch at least 0.375 inches away from the bottom here too, so that we don't have any thickness issues. And that's pretty much it. The only other thing is we don't want to have a pocket. And to show you what a pocket is, or to talk about a pocket, I have to actually show you. So once we get into the sketch, I'll show you. So I'm going to draw a sketch onto this side. We always do the side first. Instead of a line or a circle or a rectangle, we're going to use this tool right here, which is called the spline tool. And it's kind of like a piece of spaghetti. So we're going to click um, the tool. The next step is to draw or to choose the plane. And then we're going to draw it. Now, let me show you something that we don't want to do. If I click here, this is basically just to show you how the spline works. And I click down here you'll see that we can wiggle this thing back and forth like a rope or a piece of spaghetti. And this will cause us to be able to make a curvy shape, a curvy line. So let me just draw something here that we cannot do. And I'll show you two reasons why we can't. See how this is following me around? If I hit the escape key, it doesn't follow me around anymore. So although this looks really cool, the one thing you have to be very conscious of is our CNC machine, the bit can go up and down, it can go left and right, and it can come towards you and away from you, all right? Maybe not the greatest demonstration, but if you're not in front of me, it's kind of tough to tell you that. So the one thing our bit cannot do is it can't go at an angle like this. And on so if you're cutting straight up and down, the only thing that you can do from this point is go straight down. So all of this stuff back here, it wouldn't be able to cut because we can't take that bit and tilt it to the side and have it come, come in here and cut at an angle. It has to cut straight up and down. Same with this right here. You can't have the bit come down here and make a turn and cut back into there. It has to be something that is straight up and down. So this is no good. There's a couple of ways to get rid of this sketch and start over. Here's an easy one. Trim entities, power trim is selected. Just draw a line through it, hit the green check, it's gone, okay? Let me go back into the spline. Th this is tricky because I made a really obvious pocket. Sometimes it's not so obvious like that, right? So I can also hit escape it, and that takes part of it away. I have to go back into trim entities and draw a line through it again. So as you are drawing this, let's try and keep it simple for our sketch. I got to be 0.375 inches away from here. So I'm going to start in here somewhere. And I, I sort of always draw the draw it like this. And that way when I get down here and I click a point, and notice as I'm 
If I move this around, you'll see that, you know, that spline can go all over the place. You just have to get the hang of it and make sure that your, see it trying to follow me, hit escape. Make sure that as this thing is cutting down here, it never, this area never pitches back in, right? Um, my in-person learners, I'll be able to explain what a pocket is a lot better with some visuals. For my distance learners, again, you just have to get the idea that you can't have a pocket back in here or this way right here, okay? So we've got that sketch on there. I like to dimension my sketch too. Now you don't have to dimension each and every pin, but I told you the distance from here to here, your car has to be at least 0.375 inches thick. I think that at 0.55 I'm going to be. If I'm like, yeah, I wanna pull a little bit more weight off of that. I can take it down to 0.5. And this area is a little lower than this, so it, the problem is I can't click from here to here. You always, in order to dimension it, you always have to dimension off of a point. So I'm going to show you another trick too. Watch this. If I go from here to here, that's at 0.2758. So maybe I'm like, eh, let me do 2.7. So I drew it back there a little bit. With this one, I can dimension this as well too. Maybe I want to pull that back to 5.6. There we go. So I can actually adjust this shape a little bit just by playing with these numbers. So watch this one, 5.25, I'm going to do 5.2. See how it changed that shape just a little bit, all right? Now, am I within the constraints that I need to be? I've got to be greater than 0.375 here. I've got to be greater than 0.375 here. How do I know? Well, let me show you. This is something brand new you haven't seen. So before we do any anything else, we've got to go up to Features and Extruded Cut and change Blind to Through All. And that gives us our shape, okay? I like to turn this back on again. I like to spin it to the side to determine whether we're going to have any sort of thickness issues. I'm going to go to... Um, Evaluate and thickness analysis. And in thickness analysis, that number that I told you we got to be careful of is 0 0.375. So I'm going to put point, yeah, I didn't do that right. 0 0.375. I'm going to click calculate. See how it says show the thin regions? So let it do its thing here. And you can see that I've got some color. Now, color is not necessarily what you want to see. However, the color is above the chamber and the color is above the axle here for 0.375. So what does that mean? That means that between here and here, it's thinner than 0.375. That's okay. As long as you are above 0.14 here, which I will show in my other document that's attached to this um, assignment, you got to be greater than 0.14 here. You've got to be greater than 0.375 in front of the chamber here. We were because there was no color there. The other spot that you saw some color was here. The reason being it's thinner than 0.375 from here to here. That's going to be a 0.14 number that we have to meet here as well. All right. So, um, greater than 0.14 above the chamber and above the axles, greater than 0.375 here and here. Um, a lot easier to do in person. My in-person learners are gonna be able to get the concept of this a little bit better. My distance learners, don't panic when you have color that shows up on there when we do thickness analysis, but don't ignore it either, right? So one of the things we will process as we go through this is, as long as we don't have color here and in this area for 0.375, we're good. This area in here, you can have the color. If I go back into thickness analysis and I do 0.14 and I hit calculate, and let it do its thing, you will notice that the color values change, right? No color above here because it's not thinner than 0.14. No color above here because it's not thinner than 0.14. You have a little bit right here, but that's simply because it's coming to a point right here. And if we were to measure in this area, 
obviously when you bring something to a point, it's it's going to end up being smaller than 0.14, but that's that's a non-issue, okay? That is our first crack at procedure number four, and it's something that I want you guys to try and work on. If you have to go back in and work on that sketch again, if there's something that you have to do on that sketch and you're like, hmm, you know, which one was it? Clearly, it's that last one that we were working on. If I want to go in and edit that sketch, change something, I can just expand this. I can right click on that sketch, choose edit sketch, and there are all my dimensions. So I can literally go in there, smart dimension this. And if I'm like, yeah, I'm trying to get this thing a little lighter, 2.65. Okay, pull this back a little bit, exit the sketch, and every time I change a dimension, I've got to go back in there and make sure that my thickness hasn't changed. And, and this is where this assignment gets a little bit tricky because you fix it in one spot and it can mess it up in another. Um, and it kind of evolves. It's an ever moving situation. So you just constantly have to be checking. So I have no issues right there. Um, the one thing I did want to show you, last thing I want to show you here before we save this is as we take things away, Obviously, when we go to the mass properties, look at how light it is. So it's at 71 grams. Before this, when we just had the axles, it was at, sorry, um, 170. And actually, I think this one actually started at 171. Yep. So the axles took a gram off. And when I take this sketch off, that actually removed 99 grams. So the axles itself and the sketch took 100 grams off of that already. Our goal is to get it down around 40 grams, all right? Um, so when we come back for procedure number five, I'll show you and talk about how to do a sketch on the back here. For now, that's gonna end what we need to do for procedure number four. So what I'm gonna ask you guys to do is go to File and Save As. You're going to save it in your Google Drive file stream and your uh, classroom folder in eighth grade and the rocket car. Same spot you save everything else. We're just going to change this to procedure number four. And last but not least, you guys are going to turn it in through Google Classroom, same way that you always have. And I will um, make a comment. Be careful when you submit it. This one's a tricky assignment here, so I may kick it back to you and say, hey, I'm going to need you to fix this or address that, but maybe not. You know, we may get this 100% uh, correct the first time. So hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have questions, ask me, and uh, we'll go from there. Have a good day.